The nation is still running on high emotion following Friday's U.S. Supreme Court decision overturning Roe v. Wade, the landmark 1973 ruling ensuring the constitutional right to abortion. Thousands took to the streets in cities and small towns this weekend across New Jersey, demonstrating the polarizing tension among both those fighting for abortion rights and those celebrating the decision. The right to regulate abortion is now in state's hands. In New Jersey, abortion rights will remain unchanged, codified into state law earlier this year. But about half the country has already moved to limit access or outright ban the procedure, including Mississippi, where the abortion clinic at the center of the Supreme Court decision is staring down its final days of operation. And while a majority of Americans surveyed say they disagree with the fall of Roe, the latest NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll also finds a majority oppose expanding the number of justices on the high court. It's just the latest example of fractured opinions on the issue, even in a blue New Jersey. Joanna Gagas reports. I read the decision. It is brilliant. It is humane. It is compassionate. And we're also very proud that Justice Alito is from Hamilton Township. Republican Congressman Chris Smith spoke at an anti-abortion rally in Trenton this weekend, cheering the Supreme Court decision on Friday to overturn Roe v. Wade. The reversal of Roe just ushers in a new period for all of us to talk to our lawmakers here in New Jersey. You know, again, I can't be more disappointed in Governor Murphy and the legislature but their position, according to the Marist poll, is supported by only 17 percent of the American public. Abortion on demand till birth. Smith calling out the Reproductive Freedom Act signed by Governor Murphy in January that expands access to abortion, contraception and does away with limits on when a woman can access an abortion. By contrast, Smith has said he would seek a federal abortion ban after 15 weeks, an idea that has health care providers and advocates in New Jersey deeply concerned. It would mean that you would see a lot more women die. You would see a lot more illegal abortions, which would be uh, potentially unsafe. We would see more women die from pregnancies that endanger their lives because it could be something medically happening with the pregnancy. Linda Schwimmer says that medical reasons go beyond what many might think of. Medical is broad. I mean, for instance, somebody's mental health, uh, emotional health, it all plays into this. So it's a decision that they make what's best for them at that moment in their life and their ability physically, mentally, emotionally to be able to go through a pregnancy and give birth. In the wake of Friday's ruling, 13 states have trigger laws that would ban abortion immediately. At least eight have already enacted them. Dr. Glenn Marie Matthews is an abortion care provider who fears the consequences for women around the country. People that are will will be impacted the most are those, of course, that are marginalized already. It will be black women. It will be women that are of um, poverty level. So how can we come up with funding so that those individuals can um, get access to the care that they need? Governor Murphy has welcomed out-of-state women seeking abortion care to New Jersey. And today, the Senate Judiciary Committee voted on two bills proposed by Senator Nia Gill that would protect them from facing extradition to their own states for seeking an abortion here and allows them to countersue for any legal challenges they may face. Those bills passed committee and today, acting New Jersey Attorney General Matt Matt Platkin joined with a national coalition of 22 attorneys general to say abortion care is health care, period. Regardless of the decision in Dobbs, broad access to abortion remains protected in states that recognize reproductive freedom, such as ours. Are you concerned that New Jersey's health care system could be overburdened by women coming from out of state seeking care here? Yes, I am concerned about that possibility. I think that we already don't have enough uh, access to reproductive health. And that's, I know, one of the things that advocates have been calling for is more funding um, to expand training and capacity. And we should be doing that uh, whether or not we have this surge of demand, but I, I think it's highly likely we will have a surge and we could be overwhelmed by it.
Glenn Marie Matthews points to a key change in the Reproductive Freedom Act that allows midwives and mid-level providers to provide abortion care during the first trimester. And so with the training of midwives and mid-level providers um, in abortion care and access, I think that would significantly and will significantly increase um, access for patients um, anticipating that backlog that you might anticipate. So I think um, we're putting ourselves in a good position in terms of making sure that there's a broad amount of people that can provide the care um, in a safe manner. She's already receiving calls from out of state and expects to see those patients soon. I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.